of the first question the brother asked, he wants to know how will he come to know that is Islam the correct religion which you should follow? And the second part that is similar, that how will you come to know that Islam is the truth? Exactly. And the third that he said at the one of my speech, that J.S. Cash, peace be upon him, said that if you want to enter Jannah, you should keep all the commandments and follow all the laws mentioned in the Old Testament. How in this age can we follow all the laws of the Old Testament? I will try and club the first two questions together. That how do you know that Islam is the correct religion to worship? And how do you know that Islam is the truth? Islam comes from the word salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word film, which means to submit your will to God. Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. And for any book to claim that it is a message from God, for any religion to prove that it is from Almighty God, this revelation, this book, this religion should stand the test of time. Previously, it was the age of miracles. And the glorious Quran is the miracle of miracles. Later on came the age of literature and poetry. Muslim and non-Muslim Arabic scholars alike, they claim the glorious Quran to be the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. But today, if a religious book says in a very poetic fashion, the world is flat, will a model man believe? But naturally no. Because today is the age of science and technology. So if we put this test of science and technology to all the religious scriptures that we have today, of the different religions of the world, all of them fail the test except the Quran. And I've given a lecture on the topic Quran and modern science, compatible or incompatible. Time does not permit me to give a full lecture in this question answer session. But I'd like to mention that Albert Einstein said, the famous physicist and the Nobel Prize winner, that science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. Let me remind you. The glorious Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. And there are more than 6,000 signs, more than 6,000 ayats in the glorious Quran, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. Now, if you compare the scientific facts that we have come to know, we find that what science has discovered recently, maybe 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, 400 years back. The glorious Quran has mentioned 1400 years ago. The Quran speaks about the creation of the universe in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. What the scientists discovered recently about the Big Bang. What they discovered 50 years back is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. We came to know that the earth is spherical in 1577 when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth. The Quran says in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 30, that we have made the earth egg-shaped, referring to the egg of an ostrich, and we know the egg of an ostrich is geospherical in shape. We previously thought that the light of the moon was its own light. Recently we came to know 100 years back, 200 years back, 300 years back, that the light of the moon is reflected light, not its own light. This is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61. So who could have mentioned all these facts in the Quran which we came to know recently? Previously, when I was in school, I had learnt that the sun revolves but does not rotate about its own axis. Quran mentions in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 33, that the sun, besides revolving, it also rotates about its axis. Today, science has come to know that besides the sun revolving, it even rotates about its axis, which is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago. In this way, the Quran speaks about botany, about biology, about zoology, about embryology, about genetics, all which we came to know recently in science, 50 years back, 100 years back, 300 years back, 500 years back. So if we put this test of science today to all the religious scriptures, the only religious scripture that passes this test is the glorious Quran. Today, science hasn't advanced so much 
that it knows everything. So I tell the people that if you analyze the Quran, we come to know approximately 80% what the Quran speaks about science. Today, science has confirmed it is 100% correct. There may be about 20% which is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct, the balance 20% inshallah will also be correct. So it is a logical belief. There is not a single verse in the Quran which has been disproved by scientific fact. There may be hypotheses which may not agree with the Quran, but there is not a single verse in the Quran which is disproved by any scientific fact. So based on this, if we put this test to any scripture, the only religion, the only scripture that passes this test is Islam and Quran. I started the question answer session by quoting a verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, Wakul jal al batil, inna batil ka Say that truth has arrived and falsehood perishes. For falsehood, it's by its nature bound to perish. So if you put this test, the only religion that passes the test, the only truthful religion which is not corrupted, that's the reason William Moore said that the only religious scripture, he said 200 years back, being a critic of Islam, the only religious scripture that has not been altered and has maintained its pure form for 1200 years, it is the glorious Quran. So based on these facts, the only religion we can think and can understand and can believe it is truthful and correct, it is the Quran. As far as the third question is concerned, that I had mentioned in my speech, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that you have to follow the commandments in the Old Testament. I was quoting the verse of the Bible, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you have to be a good Christian at the time of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if you want to enter paradise, you have to follow all the commandments of the Old Testament. You cannot break a single jot or a tittle. If you do that, you shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So based on this verse of the Bible of Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 to 20, you have to follow each and every law of the Old Testament. And your question was very good and very logical. How can we in this age follow everything of the Old Testament which is difficult, I agree with you. That's the reason Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that ye shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Your prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is prophesying the coming of the last and final messenger, last and final prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That when he will come, he will guide you unto all truth. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, knew that everything what is mentioned in the Bible cannot be followed later on, maybe a few centuries later. That's the reason he said that he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth, talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So at that time, maybe it was possible to follow the rules and regulations mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, in future, when the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, comes, you should follow him. So if you have to be a good Christian today, besides believing in one God, you should also believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, brother. The other question is coming from a Christian background with a Christian family. How will I uh, adapt or connect to my family if I convert to Islam and having two different faiths in the same compound? Brother asked the question that if I convert to Islam, how will I connect with my family having two different faiths? Brother, you know there's something like the Old Testament and something like the New Testament. Even though you are a Christian, you can follow the laws of the Old Testament after the New Testament has come. If there is something like the Old Testament and New Testament, there is also something like the Last Testament. 
the glorious Quran is the last testament of Almighty God. And in this glorious Quran, not a single prophet which is mentioned in the Bible has been derogated. In Islam, you have to believe in all the prophets that came earlier. And there are no less than 25 prophets which are mentioned in the Quran. And all of them, except for Prophet Muhammad and a couple of them, they are mentioned in the Bible. So, we have to respect all the prophets of Almighty God. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Almighty God has sent 124,000 messengers on the face of the earth. So, if you become a Muslim, you do not have to disrespect any of the prophets mentioned in the Bible. In fact, you will have to tell them, I am following 100% what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said. What the other Christians are doing, they may be following 80%, maybe 90%, maybe 50%. You should tell them that Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14 says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. So I am following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, much better than the other so-called Christians. So if you become a Muslim, you will be a better Christian than the Christian themselves. Hope that answers the question, brother. Yes. What's your fifth question? <laughs> I just ran out of questions now. <laughs> Fine, so all your questions answered. Yes, it has. Thank you. So now, are you convinced about the religion of Islam? I'm convinced about the uh, religion of Islam and I'm ready to accept Islam. <laughs> Do you believe that there's one God? I'm sorry? Do you believe that there is one God? I believe there is one God. Do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God? I believe Jesus Christ was the messenger of God. Mashallah. Do you believe, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger? I believe Prophet Muhammad was the last and final Mashallah. messenger. Mashallah. Brother, is anyone, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? I'm ready to accept. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nobody is forcing me. Are it's my decision. I'm making will? from myself. Out yes. of your free will, out of your own conviction? Out of my own heart. Because forcing anyone into Islam is prohibited in our religion and it is prohibited even by laws of most of the countries in the world. So you're doing it out of your free will, inshallah. I'm doing it out of free will. I will say in Arabic and inshallah you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha illallah illallah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasul i bear witness i bear witness i bear witness i bear witness that that there is no god there is no god but allah but allah and and muhammad and Muhammad is, is the messenger, the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah, you have become Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guides you and He helps you to guide your family to come to the religion of peace. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the best in this world as well as in the next life. Alhamdulillah. Amen. Thank you.